Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. All right, intra-month skew. All right, and what I mean by that is skew is in the month. This back on the floor we would just call skew. Um, all right, uh, how inter- how is intra-month skew structured? All right, now when I look at intra-month skew, I'm going to show you kind of what uh, you know. I'm going to pull up the SPX. Okay, this is the classic picture of what a volatility skew looks like, okay? Uh, as you move down in, price, in strike, implied vol rises, and as you move up in strike, implied volatility falls, okay? The main creator behind this is us, okay? The reason why volatility skew exists under on investments is because of our own fears, okay? Think about CalPERS. Think about every 401k. Think about every, every single thing in the world out there. What are they begging you to do? Go long, right? It's almost evil to go short. You know, that's certainly the way it gets, it gets uh, depicted out there. And because of this phenomenon where the whole world is long, the whole world has to hedge the same way. How do you hedge a long position? Guys, if you wanted to hedge a long position, how, what's the easiest and simplest way to hedge a long position? Other than selling it. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way to hedge a long position. <laughs> Type it in, guys. Yeah. Yeah, buy puts. That's, that's exactly right. Um, buying puts is, a, is certainly the easiest answer. Now, the thing is, is that puts are expensive, right? So what happened was um, we, a lot of these places, collar. So what they do is they buy puts, they finance it by selling calls. And the laws of supply and demand will end up pushing the put side, the put side of the curve uh, higher and the call side of the curve uh, lower. Now when I say put side, I mean below uh, where the stock is trading or the underlying is trading. And when I say call side, I mean higher than where the stock or underlying is trading. Okay? Uh, the next one we have is uh, smile or event skew. And, and I actually saw this, I believe, in one of the currencies. Uh, I know I saw it. Here we go. This is... Uh, this is a pretty close example of this. It's not perfect, um, but I would certainly call this somewhat of a smile. Okay, and if you look at some of the farther out months, the further out in time we go, the more kind of smiled we get, where the skew flattens up, and you get kind of this general smile. And what creates this is, I like to call it the 2 a.m. bar effect, okay? Anybody, anyone ever been to a bar at 2 a.m.? And, and you can be Raylan, honest. Raylan Edwards was at a bar at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he was. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what do they say at, uh, what do they say at, uh, at 2 a.m., you know, when, when the bar is closed? And they say, you don't have to go home, but what? You can't stay here, right? I think there was a uh, song by uh, Semisonic that say that said that, right? Closing time. Uh, yeah, you you don't ha- basically if you're seeing smile event risk skew, it's kind of we know that it's not going to stay here. We're just not sure where it's going to go, and so you'll see buyers of options on either end of the scale and. Uh, Trying to think, what else might have a, a, a another a good example might be like I think this is Vivus, V V I V U S. Mark, put in GLD. 
GLD. Oh, there you go, GLD. If you want to see a nice smile, it's going to. Oh yeah, that's perfect. All right. So nobody thinks gold is staying at 126, apparently, right? But there, and there are a lot of people that think it's heading south or are hedging against the heading south. Okay. There are a lot of people buying gold. How are they hedging it? They're buying puts. There are a lot of people that use gold as a commodity, make jewelry, make it, gold even goes into some electronics, I think, and into some of the really high, high end kind of precise, uh, you know, gizmos. They need to, they can't, they need to hedge against gold going up. So you see a perfect uh, smile there. It's almost an evil smile, you know. Doesn't that look kind of evil to you? It's kind of an, an evil smirk. Maybe it's just because it's that green color. It's like, it looks like the Grinch. Um, then finally, you'll have a uh, commodity skew. All right, and we see this one in the Canadian dollar. All right, and you'll see this in almost just about every commodity, sans gold, um, and. The reason for this is because of who is hedging. Think about oil, okay? Who is buying call options in oil and why? The airlines or, you know, uh, power companies or whoever, anybody that needs oil, they're buying calls because they need to hedge against oil going up, not oil going down. And so that kind of creates this skew. Uh, if you caught Steve and mine's earlier and mine earlier discussion, we were kind of discussing the Canadian dollar. Since we have such a one-way relationship, um, Canadians need to hedge against uh, their dollar falling, um, since they mostly import into us and don't as much count on, rely on uh, our exports coming to them. So. Uh, you know, that's the different types of skew. Now, what kind of skew do uh, ISC FX options have, do you guys think? I know we already saw a couple, but what do you guys think? Take some guesses. Take some guesses, guys. A little bit of everything. All right, we, yeah, we've seen Mike, uh, Mike says it's got a smile skew. Uh, we've seen, yeah, smile. Well, it's positive. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different. Uh, the, the answer is, is that it really depends on the product, okay? Here are two very different products with two clearly different skews. One is the Canadian dollar and one is the British pound. Okay, and you know the the Canadian dollar. They're worried about the dollar moving up against the uh, Canadian dollar. The dollar becoming more value valuable, and on the British pound, they are more worried about the pound becoming more valuable relative to the dollar. I mean, it's it's really uh, uh, pretty simple, right? Um, so, uh, let's continue along. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.